I want to talk about a technical analysis trading tool known as a Bollinger Band. Now, to illustrate this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Yahoo Finance and I'm going to use Apple to illustrate this example. So I've gone to Yahoo Finance, I've called up Apple, and if you look on the left hand side here, you have a number of choices of, of items you can get. Well, one is basic technical analysis. And you can get this information from other sites as well. And if I scroll down here, what we have is we have a stock price chart for Apple. They also have the volume underneath. And what we're looking for in technical analysis is a trend. Okay? Um, you know, it's quite clear after the fact that this would have been a great buying opportunity. And, you know, this is the bottom here from this... Uh, chart which lasts I guess one year and that you know this was probably a good time to sell as the stock bottomed out etc etc but it's kind of hard to figure this out at the time it's occurring so what people have done before that is they try and produce some sort of benchmark for comparison some sort of relative value and one of the common things that's been used is something called a moving average and you can see up here it says moving average and it gives you a number of days and a moving average is just that it's an average that moves so we take the first for example let's say we're using a five-day moving average we take the first five days of data we add them up the price data and we divide by five when a new day comes in we drop the first observation and we add the sixth so we still have five pieces of observation and we add those up and divide by five and we keep doing that all across all our data so we'll have this average that moves and so I'm going to pick a 20-day moving average here and the reason I'm going to pick a 20-day moving average is that's what's usually used for Bollinger Band and you can see this green line here represents a moving average so what does that tell us? It tells us what's the price been over the last 20 days. And you can kind of see here that we're below the average, here we're above the average, right? And so this gives us some sort of idea as to what sort of trend the stock is taking. Here we're pretty much below the moving average. So that tends to tell you that the stock price is trending down. And here, once we move above the moving average, although it does go down again, uh, indicates that, let's say here, where we're above the moving average, that we're trending upward. So this gives us a reference point for determining is the stock trending up or is it trending down. And the whole idea of technical analysis is that there are these trends. And they make a lot of sense psychologically because people tend to jump on bandwagons. Back during the uh, late 90s, during the dot-com boom, many, many people just jumped in because the stock price was going up. Why did they do that? Well, they didn't want to be left behind. It's, it's rather hard seeing your friends or family members who are telling you how much money they made in Yahoo stock or how much money they made in, in AOL stock or some other stock and saying, oh, well, uh, I think the stock market's overvalued and uh, those tech companies you shouldn't invest in. Even Warren Buffett, the, perhaps the greatest investor of the last 50 years, he was very critical of investing in dot-com stocks, and people, people criticized him widely, despite his, his phenomenal record. So imagine the average person uh, deciding, look, I'm not going to buy those stocks because they're, they're, I think they're overvalued. These are companies not making any money. You feel left out. So people will jump on that bandwagon for the same reason that they'll jump out when the market uh, turns sour. Back in 2008, when the market was tanking, and uh, later into 2009, people just kept selling. They didn't keep their wits about them because they were afraid, and everybody was telling them, I have to, you have to sell, you're going to lose everything. So they bailed out, they bailed out at the wrong time. So, you know, technical analysis seems to work, okay, or seems like it can work in the short run. Now, the problem with just using this moving average is that we're not sure 
at what point it's too high or too low. So what John Bollinger did back in the early 80s is he decided, let's put some bands around this simple moving average. And what he did is he created these bands, and I'm going to click on Bollinger bands here, and we'll scroll down again. Now we have an upper and a lower band, and these bands are two standard deviations away from the moving average. As you approach the lower band, that tends to indicate that the market is oversold, that it's low, that the price is low. As you move towards the upper band, it indicates that the market is overbought and the price is perhaps too high and perhaps it's a good selling opportunity. And if you look here, all right, right here where it's touching the uh, two standard deviations, it did continue trending down for quite a while. And you can see here that, well, here it nearly touches the upper band, although it looked like, and actually, I shouldn't say that, it actually did go down for a while. And then as it, as it gets close to the upper band, in this case, it's actually not correct. It seems to keep trending upward. But it does give you another benchmark for comparison. So you're trying to find some relative way to figure out is the price too high or is the price too low? Now, Bollinger used a 20-day moving average and two standard deviations. But you could use um, more days, okay? You could use a 50-day moving average or a 100-day moving average. But according to Bollinger, you need to adjust the standard deviation. So if you shorten the time period, let's say you go to 10 days, you have to reduce the standard deviation. And if you use more days, you have to increase the standard deviation. But again, this is, a, this is a, another approach for identifying trends. And it's a, it seems to be have a bit more information than using just a simple moving average.